Hi, welcome or welcome back to my channel. I am Nikki and I'm here with another video for you. Today, I'll be discussing with you some of the similarities and the differences between the CELPIP and the IELTS language tests. I'll be taking you through some simple details, what both tests are, where you may be able to get the tests done, the formats that they're available in, the countries they are available, the cost associated with the test, as well as my experiences of doing both of the tests. I emphasize what my preference is and encourage persons to ensure that they prepare well for the test. This video contains insights from the official IELTS and CELPIP websites. I aim not to appear biased, but I must disclose from early, having done the general version of both tests, that my preference is actually CELPIP. I'll also dive into the origins of these tests. First, let's uncover the backstory. CELPIP, that is the Canadian English Language Proficiency Index program, originated in Canada and was designated specifically to assess language skills for immigration purposes. According to the official CELPIP website, CELPIP tests are Canada's leading general English tests for immigration, citizenship, and professional designation. They have the CELPIP General, which evaluates test takers' English listening, reading, writing, and speaking skills, and is officially designated for permanent residence application by Immigration, Refugees, and Citizenship Canada, IRCC, and is also accepted for professional designations. CELPIP General LS evaluates test takers' English, listening, and speaking skills and is officially designated for citizenship applications by IRCC and is also accepted for professional designations. CELPIP measures your ability to function in English in everyday situations, covering everything from casual conversations to workplace scenarios. And personally, this is the reason why I prefer CELPIP. It's your golden ticket to seamless integration into the Canadian linguistic landscape. But where can you take CELPIP? Well, it's not just exclusive to Canada, and I think some people believe that's the case. You can find testing centers in various countries, including the US, India, the UAE, Mexico, South Africa, and many more. What's the cost for CELPIP? In Canada, it's around 280 Canadian dollars plus taxes. And that's one of the reasons too why I prefer CELPIP over IELTS because CELPIP is cheaper than IELTS is. So let me go into some of the benefits that the CELPIP website highlights. It is computer delivered. You don't have to write on paper to provide your answers to the test. You don't have to speak to uh, an actual person in the speaking test compared to IELTS. You have a single North American accent. And I found when I was um, writing the IELTS exam, the general exam, that there were so many different accents. It was really challenging to understand sometimes, as well as they use different um, words, different terms. Say, for example, the word lift versus elevator. So elevator in North America, lift is actually uh, a UK, a United Kingdom term. So some of the terms are different in different countries. They have a different meaning and it's quite easy for you to misunderstand some of the words. Another um, benefit that's highlighted on CELPIP website is that you have quick online results. So your results are available online in just four to five calendar days after the date that you take the test. And finally, they have free studied materials. You can also purchase materials, additional materials if you wish. So they have free sample tests, videos, online information sessions, preparation courses, and webinars. Now let's shift our focus to IELTS. 
the International English Language Testing System, IELTS, originated in the United Kingdom and has become a global benchmark for English proficiency. IELTS measures your ability to communicate in English across all four language skills, listening, reading, writing, and speaking. With testing centers in a whopping 140 countries, it's like having a linguistic passport to almost every corner of the globe. And what about the cost? Well, that varies by country, but on average, in Canada, you're looking at up to 335 Canadian dollars, and this depends on the province and the format of the test. So whether you're in Brazil, Japan, Australia, or even Iceland, you can get access to the IELTS test from over 4,000 test locations in 140 countries worldwide. So let's move to the benefits taken from the IELTS website. So the benefits are the fact that you can do your test online. So you can take the test remotely. However, these tests are not accepted by visa immigration authorities. It requires for you to have specific equipment to complete the test and the results are available within three to six business days. If you should do the in-person uh, computer component, you use the computer at the IELTS test center. Results are available in three to five business days. The visa applicants must test in person as well. If you do the in-person on paper test, which is the one that I did, you have to use a paper and a pen and you do it at an IELTS test center. The results are available within 13 to 14 business days and visa applicants must take the test in person. So back to the CellPIP's strengths. Did you know that it has a computerized format and a virtual speaking section? No examiners are staring you down. Just you and the digital realm having a friendly chat. It's like having a language body available whenever and wherever you need it. So for those looking to take CELPIP, it's not just about having easy conversations. The test covers practical skills, making it your key to seamless integration into Canadian life. So let me share a little bit with you about my personal experiences taking IELTS and CELPIP. Both of them were the general tests. So we're halfway through the video. If you have been getting any value so far, please remember to like the video, to subscribe to my channel, and to share the video with a friend just in case they can get value from the information that I'm sharing too. In 2019, I took the paper-based general test of IELTS. Preparing for the test was relatively easy. I watched YouTube videos and found practice resources online. I did fairly well as I scored an overall 7.5. However, I did not do very well in the speaking component. I misunderstood a word in one of the questions which impacted the quality of my response. And this is what I was talking about before when I indicated that sometimes there are different um, words that they use for a particular thing. And the example that I gave was the use of lift and the use of elevator and things like that. And if you don't understand exactly what they're asking, you, in your mind, you know what you're talking about, but the UK English or English term is actually different. And if you provide an answer, answering to the, cor the incorrect thing, then automatically your answer will be impacted in terms of the score that you get. So I honestly found the fact that I was speaking to an actual person in the speaking component of the IELTS test to be a little bit intimidating. In 2022, I completed the general self test. Within about three weeks, my husband and I, as well as another fellow Jamaican, prepared individually at first, and then we met virtually and went through the practice tests. We shared 
tips and talk through some of the component requirements. I also watch videos on Cellpip's official YouTube page of webinars where they discuss past questions and sample answers. They also have the sessions that take, it basically walks you through what each component of the test is and what it is that you, the format and what it is that you need to expect or you should expect. Basically, we timed ourselves taking the practice tests. We practiced writing to be more concise, as well as the use of a variety of synonyms and descriptive words to maximize points. Overall, we did well in CELPIP, uh, way better than we thought we would have. We found that the practice questions were a little harder than the actual test that we took and the webinars gave sample questions that seemed more challenging than the actual test was. I believe that made us overprepared for the test, which was actually great. On a personal note though, my weak point was the listening test as I did not take good shorthand notes. I focused more on writing down too much information and ended up missing a lot of specific details, details that I needed to answer the questions. So my advice to you is that practice is key for the various components, so do not take it lightly. Even if English is your native language, do not take practicing for the test for granted as you may be in for a rude awakening when you get your results. You may do not do as well as you anticipated that you would. So hear the fact that practicing and knowing the various requirements and what the components entail will make a huge difference for you when you're doing either of the tests, so whether it's CELPIP or IELTS. But as I mentioned earlier in the video, that my preference is CELPIP. It is easier than IELTS is and you will have an opportunity to practice and maybe do better than you would if you did the IELTS test. The cost difference also makes a difference. CELPIP is cheaper than IELTS and especially if you don't um, intend to use CELPIP um, for any other purposes than to immigrate to Canada, then you should be good taking the CELPIP test, especially if it is available in your home country. If it's not available in your home country, go ahead and do the IELTS. IELTS has been around for over 30 years, so it is a very popular test. IELTS and CELPIP are the two most popular tests um, for immigration purposes, whether it is that you choose to immigrate to Canada or another country, uh, and they require for students to prove their language ability, you may have to do one of the two tests or any other test that your school, the institution might accept. So in the CELPIP versus the IELTS face-off, CELPIP shines as your friendly Canadian companion. Plus, with testing centers worldwide and reasonable fees, it's accessible to language learners across the globe. So gear up, future Canadians, your linguistic journey awaits. Preparation is quite important when you're thinking of doing either the CELPIP or the IELTS language exam. Even if English is your main language, do not take it for granted that you already know how to speak or write the language. There are certain things that you need to do to ensure that you maximize all the points possible for the language test. Practice, practice, practice. I cannot emphasize how important practicing is to ensure that you do well. You may be able to write well. However, writing and being concise is also key. Knowing various synonyms for different words is important as well. Do your best and not just try to pass the test because you don't know where you will fall short in terms of the, the scores that you can get for your express entry application. And as a result, if you maximize all the points necessary or all the points possible, that can make the difference whether or not you're invited to apply or not for permanent residency in express entry, as well as the language ability or the language skills that you have will allow you to be eligible for more programs. 
So don't sell yourself short by not preparing, by not practicing how to write, practicing how to speak and in the different contexts. If you found this information valuable, don't forget to hit the like, subscribe, and ring the notification bell for more insights. Thank you so much for making it through Nikki's Lens, and I'll see you in my next video.